judo, it can't be, be learned by a video or by a book, it has to be taught. In Japan, they, they don't, when they teach judo, they start teaching judo to kids when they're young. And they always teach nagewaza, which is the stand-up part first, and newaza, which is the mat work afterwards, because nagewaza, the stand-up part, is very difficult to learn. You gotta, it takes a lot of getting accustomed to, it's mainly learning how to fall, not being afraid of falling. Because if you are afraid of falling, you probably will not be able to throw well. Because to, to throw, you need to, to, to commit yourself to throw. And, and usually you fall with the guy, so you need to be comfortable with that. And you know, you need a good instructor, and you need to keep it very simple, and you need to work on simple techniques, not try to be a judoka, because there's 67 techniques in the gokyo, but learn simple techniques that work. And, and if you, it's just like the old samurai way of, 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 of sharpening a sword. If you take one throw and work on it and understand it, and, and work on it and understand it deeply and practice it and repeat it thousands of times, you will do it. And that is the best way to do it. But you need to understand the mechanics. You need to understand the mechanics, you need to take them apart, and you need to repeat them thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times to where you can do them unconsciously. Because judo, is it, stand up is very fast and different than jiu-jitsu where you have a little bit more time to think about a technique and do it. In judo, it, it happens in your subconscious, so you have to feel the moment and do it. In professional level judo, in Olympic level judo, I mean, I think only now is that the judo, jiu-jitsu community start understanding what an Olympic level athlete is, you know, and I think that it's, you know, it's about, comparatively, it's about the same difficulty physically if you're competing at that level. I, I see the world level jiu-jitsu and these guys are, are, today they're starting to be very, very well prepared. Um, on the amateur level, uh, the problem with the, the difficulty for people that have done jiu-jitsu first and want to do judo usually comes from a very, very specific area, which is their balls of their feet and their ankles. Because people that are accustomed to, to, to pulling guard and, and fighting off their knees, they, they can become a little bit flat-footed and they start um, stepping with their heels first and it takes all speed off them. And that is very, very difficult for you to, to perform a, a judo throw with speed if you're walking on your heels and you're walking flat-footed. So anybody that wants to learn judo, wants to get fast, has to work on that. You know, if he's coming from jiu -jitsu, migrating from jiu-jitsu, most people, all, you don't have to believe me, all you have to do is look at, at, a, at a, you can watch an MMA fight where he's a jiu-jitsu guy, or you can watch jiu-jitsu, you'll see that they step with their heels first, and that takes all speed out of their movement, and judo needs speed. I mean, people don't want to be thrown, so you need to close the distance and be able to perform your technique fast, and that is the biggest problem with people that migrate from jiu-jitsu to judo, they can't do that because of the, they create a kind of atrophy in their, the arch of their feet and ankle. And there's some very famous examples. For example, Mino Taro to this day suffers from that problem. He, he, he stands, he steps flat-footed. And Fedor, for example, why he could never catch Fedor is Fedor would come in and out before he could even get to him. And that's why he got knocked out by Frank Mir. Because, you know, because of the, the way he steps, because he's always done guard in jiu-jitsu, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't use the ball of his feet. He's always stepping flat-footed and he turns him slow. Well, oh, you've got some, you've had some very, very good, good, good people in jiu-jitsu. They're very good in jiu-jitsu. Paulo Fidu was a, a national, Brazilian national level judo competitor before he went into jiu-jitsu. He's good, good stand-up. Um, you have uh, Roger Gracie has good judo stand-up. Um, uh, you have another, um, uh, I forgot, there's another <clears throat> guy that, that um, his name is Leitch, his na last name is Leitch, I, I forget his name. He, um, he was also very, very good uh, judo, not a very good thrower, but uh, still good stand-up, could hang with the guys at Olympic level stand-up, and then good jiu-jitsu. And then way back in the day you had a very, very an awesome athlete named Ezequiel Paraguasu, and uh, he would go to Carlson Graces and get everybody with the Ezequiel. 
And that's why it's called Ezekiel today. His name was Ezekiel. I trained with him a lot. A monster, so strong he was. Very good land hand picks. And you know, people say that there's no mat work in judo, but this guy would go to Rick Carlson Gracie's and submit everybody on the mat, and he got submitted in the 1986 Olympics, I think. He got submitted, and where was it? I don't remember which Olympics it was. He got submitted by the Korean, by with katagatan, with head and shoulders. So it's you know a lot of lot of good 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 um, good mat work in judo too.